if your AR-15 or AR-10 came with something like one of these and you'd rather upgrade it to something like one of these instead, there's a whole lot to choose from across the entire AR-15, AR-10 Magpul stock lineup. So today we're going to talk about them all. I'm Randy from AT3Tactical.com. These are the dozen or so Magpul stocks that we're talking about today, all of which Magpul designed for your AR-15, AR-10 type platforms. So no need to waste time here. Let's get right to it with two disclaimers before we get going. One, buffer tube diameter. There are two and mil spec is the dominant choice over commercial tubes. Uh, so much so that the only Magpul stocks you'll find specifically for that larger diameter commercial tube, they'll only come in black. So if you want all of the options, make sure you have a mil spec diameter buffer tube. Disclaimer number two are the rifle versus carbine buffer tube lengths. Pretty easy, I'll call them out along the way, but there are some Magpul stocks that only work with the longer rifle length buffer tube, some that work with both rifle and carbine, and the bulk of everything else only fitting the shorter carbine tubes. So with that, we're gonna start with the Magpul fixed stocks first because there's not a whole hell of a lot of them. Probably most of you are interested in the collapsible versions we'll talk about next, but first is the Mo rifle stock. The Magpo Mo rifle stock, it's for rifle length buffer assemblies. Those are the longer ones. So basically this is designed to be an upgrade to your plain Jane standard A2 stock. If yours came with one, it does have a massive storage area in the rear, a little bit larger than your A2. QD ambi attachment points up here on the top. And actually it has these little cutouts down below so you can mount an accessory rail, uh, like a Picatinny rail for something like a monopod. I will add one quick note on the Mo rifle stock. If you do opt to use the accessory mounting points underneath, uh, these cutouts only line up with the Magpul Mo. Uh, that's the poly five rail section. Has to be the Mo version, has to be the five slot uh, because these are not M-lock spaced mounting holes. They're proprietary to that Mo uh, rail section. Up next, we have the Magpul Mo Fixed stock, this is your carbine length fixed stock. So your option if you're probably taking off a collapsible and want the reliability gold standard of a fixed stock, the Mo fixed stock is for you. Fits right over the top of the carbine length buffer. Uh, and it has two spacers on there. One, if you decide to not use your end plate and you go with a mil spec end plate, and two, a little more space so you can actually use things like a QD end plate attachment. The next Magpul fixed stock is a bad boy. This is the Magpul PRS Gen 3. This guy has one mission in mind, the most stable, customizable stock platform with precision in mind. So heads up hunters, precision shooters, probably outside of the 5.56223 AR-15 uh, shooting world, but with a butt pad this thick and some of the finest ergonomic controls, uh, I'm pretty sure you know who you are if you're considering this one. Bigger bores, longer ranges, where stability is the utmost. So if you're not resting the PRS Gen 3 on the bench for some bench shooting and you want to travel around with this thing, you get a 10 ounce lighter version with the Magpul PRS Lite. This one was designed specifically for the shorter carbine length buffer system. Uh, Mag Sh Magpul shed some weight on this guy by making all of the adjustments an Allen wrench set screw for LOP or length of pole and comb height adjustments. Uh, the butt pad on the back means you're probably not getting this for a massive recoil reduction like the PRS Gen 3. Uh, and for fitment, you do have to ditch your fancy end plate for mounting this guy on your rifle because it fits very snugly right up into the mil spec end plate. And the fixed stock number five from Magpul didn't make it here in time. It's the UBR Gen 2. Kind of bummed that it didn't make it because I haven't personally had my hands on this one, but it is a fixed stock made for AR-10s, AR-15s. It's a hybrid between fixed and collapsible in that uh, 
the cheek weld doesn't move, it stays fixed with your length of pole adjustment. That's just probably the biggest feature that I have my eye on for this one, so I'll be looking for it when it comes in. Uh, it does have an A5 built-in length buffer tube for both the carbine and A5 spring weight systems. Um, plenty of mounting options, nifty little storage space that you can pop in and out if you decide to use it or not. And I really can't wait to get this one on the range to try out that adjustment lever to see if it is anti-snag as they say it is uh, because it's uncovered like the rest of the collapsible stocks. All right, now on to the bulk of the AR-15 stocks from Magpul, the collapsible lineup, the true collapsible lineup. There's nine in total, but I kind of fit them into three different groups. There's three standard styles, there's four Magpul Mo SLs, and then there's two that are built for storage. Starting with the three standard collapsible stocks, you have your most basic, the Magpul Mo here. It's a low thrills collapsible stock, low thrills price, two sling attachment points. Your standard Mo might be actually one of the most popular collapsible Magpul stocks. Uh, I mean, it's included on a few off the shelf ARs like your Ruger 5.56s or pre-installed on some lower tier receivers, but it's probably that lower price that drives a lot of the popularity and the fact that it's been tested by the shooting community for years. Couple notes about the standard Mo though, no lock, no friction lock, so it can get pretty squirrely back here with some wiggle uh, compared to the CTR with a friction lock that we'll talk about in a second. Secondly, yes, there are these little cutouts so you can put a cheek riser attachment or clip the cheek riser attachment on top, but it's pretty much a no-go for anything that utilizes a charging handle, so there's that. Next up, the CTR. It is a Magpul Mo with dimensions and everything with two upgrades. It's got an ambi QD attachment point and a friction lock to reduce a lot of that extra wiggle on the buffer tube when you lock it down, kind of like what we saw with the Mo. Uh, the only thing here is um, if a fixed non-movable stocks, the gold standard and a loosey goosey Magpul Mo uh, is the alternative option, anything with a friction lock like the CTR is always going to be a stability upgrade. And your standard collapsible stock number three is the Magpul STR. It's pretty much a beefed up CTR, but with trunk space. This thing's got enough trunk space on the sides to hold your four double A's, two on each side, or four of your standard one, two, three alpha batteries, two on each side. Just keep in mind that the more stuff you carry, the more weight you carry also. For the rest, uh, there's a QD mount, it's ambidextrous as well, uh, but you do have to manually swap it from one side to the other, depending on which side you choose. The difference in width between the two, the CTR width and the STR, is almost exactly one inch. The Mo and the CTR are one and a half inch wide, while the STR is two and a half inches wide, which to me just means more real estate for my cheek to rest on, which I personally steer towards. One thing you'll notice about all three of these standard stock groups is the shape of the butt pad. Uh, another reason this group is so popular is the more ergonomic curve to really fill up a much, as much of that shoulder pocket as possible. And the curvature can actually help with shoulder placement, muscle memory, putting it in the same spot every single time, particularly when you're running without body armor. It's actually on that topic of body armor and kits, we have the Magpul SL series stocks. Magpul specifically designed with that purpose in mind, uh, mainly because they have, mainly they have a smaller footprint, uh, tall wise, height wise than your standard Mo or CTR, as well as a more vertical uh, or slightly angled butt pad with a, a toe hook here that reduces snags on your kit when you're transitioning. And I will say one thing that stood out to me the most about the SL series stocks is the fitment on your buffer tube. They fit so snugly uh, that there's zero wiggle room when locked in, uh, but even the friction and resistance as you change the lengths, it really feels solid. So it holds up without any additional friction lock needed. All right, up first for that Magpul SL series, we have the Mo SL footprint wise, uh, it's pretty damn close to the same length and width as your CTR or STR, uh, but the Mo SL, it does have a slightly wider comb or cheek rest by about a tenth or two tenths of an inch. Um, I kind of feel the difference on my cheek, but if I'm blindfolded, I probably couldn't tell you. 
Other than that, you got two sling mounting attachment points, one AMBQD point, uh, and a very low profile of adjustment lever. Uh, you just have to compare the Mo SL side by side to the CTR and see that it definitely is more snag proof in its rounder and smoother design. Actually, uh, it's the exact same price point too. All right, next we have the Magpul SLS, and there's really one thing to say about this one. It's max storage, minimal footprint, although we're really talking about a quarter of an inch smaller than the uh, STR that we just saw. I have to say that a quarter of an inch and in updated storage design does actually slim it down quite a bit. Probably the biggest difference here, and we're talking about the same price point for the SLS and the SRT, uh, the SLS storage is molded into the cheek rest for one smooth continuous curve, uh, which says to me, no water, no dirt, no debris getting into the little cracks here. And even more than that, the storage compartments on the SLS are completely sealed with O-rings uh, and these little covers that can be a bear to wiggle off that you just saw, uh, which gets my vote for the most waterproof or weatherproof storage. The next two in the Magpul SL series stocks are these tiny little guys. It's the SLK, the newest or latest SLM. Uh, they're 100% designed to be ultra compact for your SBR truck gun, maybe a backpacker, PDW, really anything that you're trying to keep as small as possible. I mean, when you put the SLK side by side next to the CTR, you pretty obvious what you're gaining in space here. And although I couldn't get the Magpul SLM uh, newest one here in time for the video, it's exactly the same as this SLK. It's just three quarters of an inch shorter off the nose. That's really all there is to it. As for sling attachment points, you can uh, run a sling straight through this little cutout, but it's an M-lock slot actually uh, for slapping on like a QD mount. Now we get to Magpul's storage trunks uh, for AR-15 stocks, your ACS, your ACSL. I say storage trunks for a reason. They're massive, they're big, but for the storage reason. If you need max storage capacity, the Magpul ACS is your answer. It's bigger, it's bulkier, it's longer than any Magpul collapsible stock. And you can also squeeze an extra one, two, three alpha battery in each of the side compartments for a total of six, or much like the uh, STR or the SLS, you can have two AA batteries in each side. On the other hand, we have the ACS-L, the light version of the ACS. Basically ditch the battery tubes and you have the ACS-L. Still maintains this larger uh, storage compartment right here, about two inches by an inch and a quarter opening on that. Uh, but there is one thing to keep in mind about any of the storage options uh, that we see here on the Magpul stocks today. If and when you expose your stock to the elements, check for moisture inside the compartments. Make it a part of your battle rhythm for maintenance because uh, they are not waterproof. The closest to waterproof, that SLS with the O-ring seals. Um, but if your battery is corroded inside, you're gonna have a bad time. Another tip for you that works for every single Magpul collapsible stock, what well, works for me anyway, is going to your hardware store, picking up a little hook tool like this for about a quarter, saves the hell out of the tip of my fingers when I'm trying to pull the things off and on. I just given me an extra spot to pull the release down to slide it onto the buffer tube. Secondly, if you think this video helped you wade through some of the dozen or more Magpul stocks, Check out our version for Magpul Slings right over here. Promise not to confuse you with all the fancy acronyms. We'll see you over there.